universe makes absolutely no sense. And for the past few decades, I've been trying to understand a simple question. How big is the universe really? But there's something that scientists claim is a fact that just doesn't sit well with me. The math doesn't work. Take the size of the universe. It's about 93 billion light years in diameter. That means to go from one side of the universe to the other at the speed of light. The fastest anything can travel would take 93 billion years. Not only that, but the size of the universe is constantly increasing and the rate at which it's increasing is itself increasing. Now take the age of the universe. It's only 13.8 billion years old. 93 billion light years wide, 13.8 billion light years old. Do you see my issue here? If the universe is 13.8 billion years old and 93 billion light years across, that means that if you were going at the speed of light and you started at the beginning of time, you'd only be able to get across a fraction of it. The universe isn't old enough to be as big as it is. And that just doesn't make any sense, right? Am I the only person that has a problem with this? Or does it bother you too? Today, I'm gonna find an answer. How can the universe be so impossibly large? How did it get this way? And how can a human like you or me visualize the size of the universe using the city of San Francisco and a few other things we'll find along the way? Starting in Golden Gate Park. This is an ant. Ooh. That ant will spend its entire life right here in Golden Gate Park. You or I can visit Griffith Park in LA, Central Park in New York, or Hyde Park in London, but that ant will never have the chance. For something so small to understand something as large as the Earth is almost impossible. Even understanding Golden Gate Park would be really difficult for our little pal. The Earth simply exists on a scale that that ant can't relate to. The same is true for someone like you or me trying to understand the scale of the entire universe. It is really hard, but that doesn't mean we can't try. Now keep our little ant friend in mind because we will visit him later. To understand this size, let's try and visualize the scale of humans planets, solar systems, and the speed of light in our universe. Visualizing the size of the universe is hard. So buckle in, get excited, and hit that thumbs up button. Let's say we had a scale model of the entire state of California that was the size of San Francisco. Then a person my height, six feet or so, would be about the size of a grain of sand. Does that make any sense? If we took California and everything in it and squished it down to be the size of San Francisco, people would be about the size of sand grains. Now let's say the entire surface of Earth was the size of Golden Gate Park, which by the way is way bigger than Central Park in New York City. Well, just a little bigger. How much space do you think would be taken up by California? Well, it's actually about half of one of these soccer fields. Is that bigger than you thought? Me too. But don't worry, that's the last time that will happen. Picture our solar system, all of the planets that revolve around the sun. If the width of the solar system was represented by the width of the Golden Gate Bridge, how big would our Earth be? It would be about the size of a quarter. Now let's say our entire galaxy was the height of the Salesforce Tower, the tallest building in San Francisco and the second tallest on this side of the Mississippi. If that was our galaxy, how big would our solar system be? I'll give you a hint, it's tiny. The answer is about the thickness of a single sheet of paper. Last step, if our universe was the entire length of Ocean Beach, three and a half miles long, how long would the Milky Way be? About the width of a human hair. This one's gray. There's a common saying that we are just a speck of dust floating in space, but even that is generous. We are so much smaller than that. Plus, this is just half of what you need to know to understand the scale of the universe. Next, we have to understand the fastest possible speed that any physical thing can travel. The speed of light is really, really fast. Think you know how fast? Try this. I'm here at the de Young Museum. If you could go the speed of light, how far do you think you could get in three seconds? Do you think you could get to the other side of the museum? Over to the band show? Usain Bolt, the fastest man ever, could make it about 120 feet, roughly to those tables over there. But you're light. How fast can you go? Well, you could make it to the moon and back. 
and have time left over to circle the Earth three times. And that's all in just three seconds. A light year is how far light goes in an entire year. Three seconds, one year. And just the part of the universe that we can see is 93 billion light years across. Yeah, light is fast really fast. Before we talk about how the universe got so big, there are some crazy things that you need to know. There are one septillion stars in the universe. That's this number, roughly the same number as grains of sands on the entire planet Earth. Our sun is a star, but unlike the grains of sand on this beach that are really close together, the distance between stars is enormous. The next closest star to our solar system is Alpha Centauri. If the distance from Earth to Pluto was the width of my hand, the distance from our sun to Alpha Centauri would be the entire width of Golden Gate Park. Let's zoom out and look at galaxies. There are two trillion galaxies in the known universe. If this single blade of grass represented one galaxy, we would need the grass from 100 Golden Gate Parks to get to two trillion. And just like stars, the distance between galaxies is enormous. They're not close together like the blades of grass here at the Polo Grounds. It's more like boats on the Pacific Ocean. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is 100,000 light years across. The next closest galaxy is called Andromeda, and it is 2.5 million light years from here. Plus, we're only talking about the observable universe. Just like when you're standing on the shore, you can only see a tiny fraction of the ocean, we can only see a tiny fraction of the universe when we look at the sky. And that's true even with the most impressive telescopes. The universe is too big to understand, but that still doesn't tell us how it got that way. There are two things that gave us such a massive universe. First, the Big Bang, but that only accounts for about 0.02% of the size of the universe. And you've already heard about it, so forget the Big Bang. The reason the universe is so big and still expanding is dark matter. Dark matter is annoying. What is it? Basically, some scientists were looking through a telescope and saw some stuff that didn't make any sense based on their accepted theories. Those galaxies are moving way too fast. There's gotta be some energy or matter here that explains what's going on, but I don't see anything. Maybe that's because it's really dark. What is it then? I guess it's dark, but you get the idea. I find that really unsatisfying. Some Einstein scientist came up with a theory, a guess, but that theory was wrong. Unless we just invented some incredibly powerful force just floating out in space. Even though we can't see it, we can't touch it, and we don't know what it is. We just know that it has to be there. And it gets more annoying. The Einstein scientist that made that up was actually Einstein and Isaac Newton. So for now, I guess we're just gonna have to believe in dark matter. But that just bothers me. Does it bother you too? If it does, we're not alone. It bothers this guy too. And in the book, he points out that there was a time where we knew the world was flat until we realized that was wrong and the earth is round with other planets revolving around us. And then we realized that was wrong and the earth revolves around the sun and so on and so on until we get to today. Based on our track record, the things we accept as truths today, like dark matter, are probably wrong. Of course, there's a lot more to the story. And if you wanna know it, I would recommend this book, which I'll link to down below but we've got to get back to the universe. One of Einstein's brightest ideas is that space and time are the same thing, space-time. And space-time can stretch and bend and curve like a balloon. And when a powerful force acts on space-time, that is exactly what happens. And dark matter, combined with all the other matter in the universe is a very powerful force. Dark matter is so powerful that the universe is expanding at a rate faster than the speed of light. And that expansion isn't limited by the speed of light. That's because the fabric of the universe isn't an object. It's space, time, space time. That means there is an incomprehensible amount of space out there that we can't see. And that's because light hasn't had a chance to get here yet. The universe keeps expanding faster and faster, but light, can only go the speed of light. Do you think we're ready to tie all this together? I think we're close, but for that, we're gonna need a balloon.
Unfortunately, Safeway does not sell balloons, so that means we're gonna have to try again tomorrow. Let's say our old friend, the ant, is on the side of this balloon, and now he represents light. He moves fast, literally the speed of light. He wants to go from one side of the universe to the other. But at the same time, the air that I blow into the balloon represents the force of dark matter. And because space-time isn't a physical thing, it's not limited by the pesky speed of light. So in our universe, this balloon expands faster than the ant can move across it. And if this stresses you out like it does me, just remember that for centuries, we knew the Earth was flat. So what we know to be true today probably isn't. <laughs> So how big is the universe? Though this problem has been bothering me for decades, we may just have to get used to the idea that humans are not able to comprehend the size of the universe. Just like an ant that can't understand the size of this park, we are always going to struggle to understand the vastness of space. So when you look at the night sky and see the stars, you are looking back into time at the speed of light. What exists beyond the stars? For now, we don't know. So finally, how big is the universe? The universe is bigger than we will ever see, know, or understand. If you liked this video, I think you will love this one. And hit subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching.